Hi students, I'll try this educational video to technologically introduce how to size the shell thickness of a storage tank based on the API 650 standards using the one foot method. Of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. Well, first some general rules should be taken into consideration when calculating the shell thickness. The first one is uh, the required shell thickness denoted by T should be the greater of the design shell thickness including any corrosion allowance denoted by TD and the hydrostatic test shell thickness denoted by TT and I will explain how to determine this design shell thickness TD and this hydrostatic test shell thickness TT later in this educational video. Also the shell thickness shall not be less than the values indicated by the table uh, that you see uh, in this slide in function of the nominal tank diameter and uh, here uh, this means that uh, even if uh, the calculated shell thickness is lower than uh, these values we have to take this uh, shell thickness values as minimum shell thickness now I'll explain how to determine the shell thickness based on the API 650 standards using the one foot method. It's to note that this method is used only for tanks smaller than 61 meters diameter only. And uh, it's to note also that the shell thickness is not constant over the shell from the bottom to the top uh, since the pressure is not constant over the shell so we have to, to subdivide this shell into several shell courses as it is depicted by this uh, figure and we have to calculate the appropriate thickness for each shell course. It's to note also that uh, the shell thickness calculated by this one foot method is determined at 0.3 meter above the bottom of each shell course. Now I'll explain how to determine the shell thickness for each shell course. So as I said before, the required shell thickness T will be the greater of the design shell thickness denoted by TD and the hydrostatic test shell thickness denoted by TT. So here the design shell thickness TD is determined in function of the nominal tank diam diameter denoted by D, the design liquid level denoted by H, the design specific gravity of the stored liquid denoted by G, and the allowable stress for the design condition denoted by SD, and the corrosion allowance denoted by CA. While the hydrostatic test shell thickness, TT, is determined in function of the nominal tank diameter D, the design liquid level H, the design specific gravity of the storage liquid G and the allowable stress for the hydrostatic test condition denoted by ST. Here the design liquid level is the height from the bottom of the considered shell to the top of the shell. So this design liquid level will vary uh, depending on the considered shell course. For example here if we have to determine the thickness T1 associated to the shell course 1 we have to use this H1 which is the height from the bottom of the shell course 1 to uh, the top of uh, the shell uh, and uh, here to determine H1 is uh, used to determine TD1 and TT1 one here to say the shell course 1 and uh, we have to determine finally the required shell thickness T as the greater of, the, of TD and uh, TD here, if we have to determine the thickness T2 associated to the shell course 2, we have to use H2, which is the height from the bottom of the shell course 2 to the top of the shell. Same thing, in the same way, we determine the thickness T3 based on H3, thickness T4 of the shell course 4 based on uh, H4, and uh, the thickness T5 based on the height, uh, the design liquid level H5. Now for the allowable stresses, we have the allowable stress uh, for the design condition SD and the allowable stress for the hydrostatic test condition SD and they are determined directly based on the API 650 standards using the table 5-2 as it is depicted by the figure that you see in this uh, slide, of course, depending on the material of uh, the plate.
It's to note here so that some other secondary information about the design liquid level denoted by H should be examined in the API 650 standards, the section 5.6.3.2. That's all for this educational video. Please, if you have any questions, remarks, or suggestions, please mention it in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention.